My name is Daniel Rogers with Duotech Services. And what I'm here to talk to you about today is the difference in electron devices that you would typically see in TWT's traveling wave tubes and gallium nitride. There's a lot of opportunity out there to upgrade devices that are currently on electron devices that are vacuum devices, um, conductors and all sorts of fun stuff inside of glass tubes, vacuum tubes, and moving those to modern semiconductor devices such as gallium nitride. Now, what are some of the things that you need to consider when trying to make that jump? Tubes, they're old. They get a bad rap in some ways, actually. They have a lot of uh, characteristics that can actually be desirable. So what are some of the considerations you have when you're looking at a, say, a, a TWT uh, type electron device versus something like a gallium nitride power amplifier, say, for radar or electronic warfare, things like that. Now, when you look at what are the thermal considerations of your environment, tubes, You've got glass, you've got metals. They're very heat tolerant. They produce a lot of heat, they can take a lot of heat. They're very tough and durable in that way. Gallium nitride devices are getting better and better in their ability to take and deal with and manage heat. But really, you've got to get rid of the heat some way. It just happens that with electron devices, you can handle a huge amount of heat. Also, some of the environments where electron devices really shine are those that are very harsh in a radiation harsh environment. Uh, spaceborne applications, those where you would have a high exposure to radiation. And you'll see a lot of those things in electron devices for their applications where those are uh, uh, situations where they may be very prone to being exposed to radiation, spaceborne applications and things like that. Also, failure and degradation. Now, where does that come up? Tubes, you've got to worry about the bias voltages they have and you have to worry about, for example, in a TWT, your cathode voltage, your grid voltage, make sure your cathode's gonna bring up your peak amount of amplification, making sure your grid and your passband is gonna not distort that actual passband as far as flatness across frequency. When the tube is out of, has an out-of-spec voltage, you're gonna have problems. And when the tube goes, you're faulted, you're in a condition that is no longer optimal for the application, it's gone you have no more power amplifier device. With gallium nitride devices, you have a lot of expense when it comes to many, many devices for giant power applications. But if you want linear degradation, if you want degradation where if a device fails, but your system continues, maintains its ability to keep operating, that's an advantage that gallium nitride has in its uh, ability to say one device fails while the overall system keeps to keeps having the ability to operate over time so if you have a device where you may you have dozens of gallium nitride devices and one fails you lose the linear addition of that power in the system but the system keeps going you have a grid voltage or a cathode voltage that goes out of spec in a twt device it's over there's no more operation for you and that goes into what are some of the power supply considerations? Well, when you're dealing with electron devices, you're often dealing with very, very high voltages, especially in TWTs. You may have cathode voltages that are in the, you know, the tens of thousands of volts, grid voltages in the many hundreds of volts, and you may have some odd floating deck and floating ground situations. Gallium nitride, even gallium arsenide, you're dealing with much more normal electronics type voltages, things that may be 24, 28, 48, or 50 volts. These are typically more manageable. You don't have to deal with having a dense pressure vessel full of a high dielectric gas like sulfur hexafluoride in order to get a dense power supply without it arcing against itself. Also, in the maintenance of something that operates at a lower voltage, you end up with fewer parasitics. And when you have fewer parasitics, there's less that can go wrong in the system when it comes to testing and tuning and building that system. And the criticality of the components in the manufacturing process is obviously a a lot less difficult and stringent when it comes to putting that together. When it comes to the output, spectral purity. Now, I'm not going to go into exactly how a TWT works or a magnetron works or, uh, you know, the difference between a coupled cavity and a uh, helical TWT, but when it comes to spectral purity, modern gallium nitride devices have a clear superiority advantage over the spectral purity of traveling wave tubes. And that's something that we really take advantage of in our Nemesis and Delta radar families. Also, installation and maintenance. When you have a TWT, you've got to worry about very high voltages, the tuning and drift of those over time, as well as having to worry about maintaining a safe level of high dielectric gases or fluids and things like that. There's a lot more things to worry about and maintain 
in the system. Fewer things to worry about in the maintenance and operation of gallium nitride or gallium arsenide devices even. Primarily the band of operation we're thinking about when it comes to the operation of radar, we're thinking X-band, KA-band, those spaces for our radar applications. And that really lends itself to gallium arsenide and gallium nitride. And really for the power density, gallium nitride, gallium nitride on silicon carbide particularly, getting that heat out, getting good power densities, and as these device power densities are coming up, you know, two, 300 watt, 300 watt plus devices, like per transistor, we're talking about a great deal of power density. And sure, there are a lot of tubes out there that have a very, very high power delivery capability, and those are still the places where tubes do have a legitimate operational capability. But when it comes to your application, what are some of the things that you might consider in if you have a device that you're building greenfield, or if you have something that you're looking at the replacement of, what are some of the things you need to worry about and think about? Performance. First off, you're not going to build a, easily at least, a gallium nitride device uh, amplifier that works with great combining structures. We're thinking in terms of many megawatts. Tubes do have that advantage and capability of delivering that. However, there are applications that are coming out now that are, are putting together power amplifiers gallium nitride power amplifiers that are operating up in, you know, nearing that megawatt range. And that's something that uh, I think we're going to see greater and greater capability to build larger and larger devices as time goes on to meet some of those tube-only applications gallium nitride really is encroaching upon. But really looking at your very high power uh, operational areas, you know, when you get to tens of kilowatts, those are some of the things where you may come into weighing your options between them. And looking at all these considerations, what are you going to be thinking about in terms of how are you going to maintain it, how are you going to build it, how are you going to field it, and what are the densities and packages and sensitivities, whether through thermal or radiation, or does it just need to keep working even if it does have single point failures in it? Is it a bottleneck for the whole system, or do you just have something that drops off and you can deal with degraded performance in a situation where it has to work? You know, think mission critical, life saving type operations. Also, if you're moving, and converting a platform, how long are you going to run it? How much maintenance cost is it costing you to keep that electron device system running? Is it something that you have a very high cost of uh, maintenance? Or is it running a lot? Is it failing a lot? And what is the total cost of ownership? If you have a, a gallium nitride amplifier device that may run for tens of thousands of hours, and I've also seen traveling wave tube devices that really their mean time between failures for things that are still operating today are in the tens or low hundreds of hours. So look at what is the total cost of ownership where some of these tubes can cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars per unit when it comes to uh, those devices, rebuilds versus repairs versus new buys are almost the same price. And then what kind of power density are you trying to achieve? When it comes to a very high power density in a small package, if you're talking about smaller pulse widths, tubes can do that. If you have something where you're looking at larger pulse widths, and you're looking at doing some more interesting things when it comes to considering spectral purity, gallium nitride is a clear winner in that area. Now here at Duotech, our Nemesis radar, our Delta radar, and our Emerging Aries radar are things that we have a very um, interesting leveraging of gallium nitride when it comes to our offerings in both power amplifiers for the mechanically scanned systems and for the RTs for electronically scanned systems. If you'd like to have a conversation with us about upgrading your system, looking at our radar products, or discussing other options that you may be interested in bringing solid state devices like gallium arsenide and gallium nitride to your existing tube application or a new application, follow us on Twitter, visit us at duotechservices.com, or check us out on Facebook. I'm Daniel Rogers for Duotech Services.